start food plotting. We've got so much rain. So I gotta, <clears throat> I'm gonna start here in my house plot, come up with a game plan. I'm still gonna stagger them. I'm not gonna plant all of them right now, but I'm gonna get started. And in these smaller ones, I'm gonna just go ahead with the chisel disc. I think that's gonna work the best with all this dead matting from the crimping this year. It's really just a shame, uh, July 1st, and every single rain now for about at least three weeks missed us, and then we're at 100 degrees. It was 101 yesterday, around 100 today. And you can see we had really good germination, so this system, is doing its thing but look at it they're all wilted all them buckwheats are wilted i mean they they pushed their way up through this thick mat so I, I mean i'm that was one experiment i'm happy with but you know in these low spots where it might have a little more moisture they're they look slightly better but not much man it is just another drought but I might have to get the tiller out. I guess we'll see how the how the dirt works up with all this matting on this thing. I think it's gonna work out good and be really good soil, but we'll find out. All right, it looks like it's gonna work up really nice. It's got some a little better color this year. All right, so this first food plot, which is tucked in the woods, we expanded this a couple of years ago. This is gonna be a perennial plot. And I'll go through the steps of how I layer my food plots. But also today on this episode, I'm going to do a perennial plot. I'll show you what seed mixes I'm using and the process I'm using. So today we'll hit this annual plot from start to finish. And then we'll get the perennial plot from start to finish. And then definitely stay tuned for updates. We've had abnormal amounts of rain here in august which is why i'm starting at least two weeks early compared to how i normally do it i really i'm missing my hydro now again it's in the shop for service otherwise i'd be using that for these smaller plots Just right, it'll it'll cut this stuff better without pumping it up. So this section took three or four passes, um, partly because it used to be woods just a few years ago and it's still getting developed and improving. So the next one I'm going to jump in, it's the same plot, but I'm cutting across towards the gray tower there to put in the new clover plot mix. And that used to be farm field a number of years ago, so you're going to see how much better that works up than this little pre-wooded area, if you will, with all the thatch.
is the last pass. It's really wet. It's a little bit more clumpy than I like, but it'll plant. It'll plant just fine. So it's time to get to planting. All right, we're ready for uh, round one. I put the planter basket back on. I got triple 13 for the brassicas, 620, 424 for the clover mix. Uh, I am gonna try and replant the clover plot. I know it's crazy, it's August 13th, but the ground is so saturated right now, it's like springtime. So it's supposed to be hot and dry in the next couple weeks, but that ground is gonna take a little while to uh, dry up. So fingers crossed we don't get kicked in the teeth by mother nature. So I'll plant this first layer and then I'm gonna go bring the drag with. We'll drag this stuff in and I'll come back and show you what my mixes are for both the perennial and the annual. All right, so the next step for planting both of these plots is uh, to put on this new drag, which this thing's a game changer. I put up a short video introducing this thing yesterday. I'll put a link to that description because this thing is awesome. So I'm loading up with fertilizer and I'm gonna load up with the large seed that I'm putting on both of these plots, the perennial and the annual. We'll take care of this step and then we're gonna have two more steps. Oh, and when I say large seed, um, I usually prefer to use like cereal grains, like winter wheat, winter rye. But there's so many different large seeds you could use. I mean, cow peas, winter peas, soybeans for early growth. And so there's a lot of large seed you could use, but that's what I'm talking about, spiking it with large seed before you drag it. Okay, so as far as fertilizer, uh, I'm a little behind the power curve. I have a whole program ordered that's gonna be arriving any day now, but it didn't get here in time. It's Plant Agra, and it's starting with the pH. It's all liquid applications, but a lot of it is early growth, mid growth, and late growth of these different food plots. So for now, I'm going old school and just using what I have that's available. All right, so after the large seed and fertilizer is spread, I then run a drag over it. I do this for a number of reasons. A, the seed is larger and it can be buried more. B, the fertilizer gets down into the dirt instead of leaving it lay on the top. And C, if you have a dry spell or whatever and you uh, run the drag over your large seed and you bury it, let's say an inch or an inch and a half, it's going to have more moisture down there as opposed to just laying it on the top and running a cultipacker. So that's why I do the extra steps that you're going to see in this. And this drag at this point in time is one of them. All right, and a shout out for today's sponsor, uh, Paul Sizwicki from uh, Whitetail Food Plots USA. He, he started this business on his own. He's a very small business, but he is selling in uh, a lot of tractor supply stores and online. So I'm, I'm going mostly with all of his pure seed this season. Uh, I did it last season and I really liked it. So if you're looking for really good seed with no fillers in it, I'll put a link to the description because he does a really good job on putting very unique seed blends together. So now I'll show you what I'm putting in for the two plots. So for my new clover plots, I'm using this Meadow Mix Plus. Uh, it's designed to be a perennial food plot, you know, that keeps coming back every year. So you've got quarter acre bags or half acre bags, which makes it really easy. This blend is predominantly clover, which is what I wanted a clover mix, but it also has a little bit of chicory and alfalfa. Both are perennials. The deer love both of them. So this should be an interesting mix to try this year. Let's hope Mother Nature cooperates with us a little bit to reestablish that clover plot. And then on the other one, I'm going to put in, uh, there's some a couple of different tubers. There's beets and turnips and rut time tubers. I'll put them in on the uh, 
annual, the fall plot. All right, so we've got our small seeds now. All of these are, are really small seeds. So if you've never planted them in a planter, you gotta be really, really careful. A lot of guys tend to use more seed than is really recommended, but there's a lot of different philosophies on why you use more or less. But basically, that's why he labels the bags a quarter acre, half acre. You gotta really spread out these small seeds on your food plot so you don't burn through them really fast when you're using a seeder like this. After dragging, the small seed and then the final step next. Finally, finally the last step. All right, and the very last step for me after you put your small seeds on is to cull the packet. Um, I always do this. The only exception would be if it's about to rain. Like if you got like a big radar of rain coming, you could just broadcast the seed and let the rain do the job of seed to soil contact. But if there's not rain in the forecast, I prefer to cult the packet to try and get them seeds smashed into the dirt for better seed to soil contact. I've just found that it works better that way when you cult the packet. Oh, and if you don't own a cult the packer, don't worry about it. There's other options. You could get a lawn roller if you'd like. You could use your ATV or your tractor and just drive over it. That's what I did on my very, very first food plot. I can remember it, even though it was 17 years ago or something like that. You can cult the packet with a vehicle. Just basically drive over it systematically and get it all packed into the dirt. A lot of guys don't. They'll just wait, and if Mother Nature brings you rain, then you're okay. But if it if it's moist when you're planting and no rain comes, cult the packing is really gonna make the difference in that food plot, especially for those small seeds. 